This little treasure bag may hold jewelry or money or any number of things and is also a good way to get comfortable with the technique of knit weaving. I will also show you how to make this nifty drawstring that pulls itself in. I'll be using a brother machine, but if you know how to knit weave on any machine, you may use the same basic pattern. And of course, you can vary the size somewhat. Here's the punch card I used. Anything that is useful for Fair Isle and has relatively short floats is probably appropriate for knit weaving also. In knit weaving, the second color of yarn is placed in the little notched V that I have exaggerated because it shows up poorly in the picture. This yarn is not actually knitted. It's caught in the knitted stitches. And before beginning each row, it's necessary to move the weaving yarn to the leading side of the carriage, unless you have this weaving arm created for the Silver Reed family of machines, and that will swap it over automatically. To begin, use E-Wrap to cast on 30 stitches, knit 20 rows, then lift the E-Wraps to close the hem. Set the carriage to KC so it'll read the card, and knit across one time so that your needles get selected. Make sure the weaving brushes are engaged and set color two into the notch. Then knit across and color two should have been caught in the stitches for color one. Then we keep on swapping the contrasting color from side to side every row. At the right, you can't see what I'm doing, but it's the same thing that I'm doing on the left side of the carriage, making sure that that weaving yarn is in the position between the arms of the V. I find that it does help to have a little bit of weight on the fabric and that with weaving, sometimes loops of yarn form at the ends of the rows, even if your tension mast is correct. So it's a good idea to be vigilant and prepared to pull out any slack that you see developing at the end of the row. Otherwise, you'll get messy loops. For this little pouch, I used 54 weaving rows. Now we can dispense with the weaving yarn and e-wrap the working needles again with yarn like the working main yarn. We'll knit the second hem, making 20 stockinette rows, then lift those recently made e-wraps and hang them on the needles. That will close the second hem, and all we have to do is bind off, and it will match the initial hem. I bound off around the gate pegs, and now we'll just lift it off of the machine. The beginning and ending of the knitting are both top edges of the bag. We'll fold here and seam in these two positions. Do not seam the hems together. Either use a purchased cord or knit an eye cord, and pull it through the first hem, then the second hem. So both ends are coming out on one side of the bag. Mine are here. Wrap one of the loose ends around so it can go through the opposite hem again and emerge at the other end. Do the same thing with the second free end. And now they should be on the same side of the work again. And each hem should have two passes of cord going through it. Overlap the cord ends and sew them together very securely. I like to do this with the zigzag stitch on the sewing machine. I find that most effective and least bulky. We want that overlapped and sewn area to stay hidden in one of the hems. So pull and tug and redistribute the cording until it can and stay there whatever position that your drawstring happens to be in. After that, you'll be able to open the pouch by pulling on the edges and close it by pulling on the strings.